I'm just here in sort of one of the King labs and they've been kind enough to sort of like lend all this equipment to me for a little bit. Um, and just to show some of like the bench tests that would be done. Now you remember, you know, as we're, as we're going, kind of going through and qualifying lubricants, we sort of stage things up. So you might have, you know, you know, chemical bench tests that you're doing in the lab. You're doing that to verify that the chemistry is working. And then you go on to more like, let's say equipment bench tests. And each of these is supposed to simulate a specific lubrication condition. So here, for example, is something called the Timken test. You might see it on a lot of spec sheets as the Timken OK load, right? Now it's a little bit hard to see from that view, but effectively what we've got here is a disc and as well as a block. And that disc is gonna rotate against the block. And of course it is an evaluation of the amount of wear. Now, with obviously we're doing it under specific conditions and the whole reason we have this entire apparatus is so that we can very much control the amount of load and obviously the speed and we do this under you know regular conditions and that's going to give us the Timken OK load. So in this instance, right, we've got a rotating disc against a block and so that's going to give us a very specific kind of lubrication. So remember that and a block. As we move across Right, what we've got here is the two four ball tests. So you're probably familiar with the idea that there is four ball wear tests and then four ball weld tests. And in both instances, what we're able to do is control the amount of load, basically by putting this weight here, obviously the moment arm is gonna control the amount of load. Now there is a, there's kind of a, a chuck, right, that's used and this is a sample of something that's already welded, right? but these go in here, right? And the idea is that we are spinning the top ball against these three that are loaded in a triangular configuration in the bottom of the cup. Now, the thing about this system is this is an extreme scenario when you consider lubricated conditions. So if you think about it, how does a ball contact the other three balls? In each instance, it's a point load. Right, so theoretically, how does a sphere touch another sphere? It does it at an infinitesimally small point. And we do this three times. We're rotating the top ball relative to the others while placing a load, which is obviously generated by these weights. And in one instance, we are looking for a wear scar under controlled conditions. And in this instance, what we're looking at is the weld load. So you can see really up close here, Right, if I show you the interface between them, hopefully that zooms in, you can actually see that the balls have welded together. So this is something that would happen if you have uh, that sort of metal on metal action. And what this is really testing for is kind of like the EP qualities of the oil. Now, one thing about all of these bench tests, we are always trying to simulate lubricated conditions, but we're taking it to the extreme. So in the case of the four ball test, you know, in what kind of lubricated system do you ever see point loading? The reality is it never happens, right? The closest that we probably have is a rolling element on the inside of a race. But even then, it's a point against a flat surface. So this, this kind of circle, well, let's say sphere on sphere, is not really a condition where, which we ever lubricate. And so in that regard, this is a very extreme condition that you don't really see in the world, real world. So again, these are screening tests, right? So we're using this as, for example, um, a, a way to screen formulations and it can give us the trajectory of, is my formulation headed in the right or the wrong direction? Now, one thing I would caution against is selecting the oils exclusively on the results of one of these tests. So for example, just because something has a better EP rating does not, sorry, a better four ball weld load rating does not necessarily mean that it is a better performing lubricant. Because like we said, this is an extreme scenario which is not re replicated in any lubricated conditions. Um, in fact, there was a study, and I've done a video on this before, where they compared uh, EP oils, anti-wear oils, base oil, milk, water, and beer and the milk and the beer were shown to perform better 
on four ball tests than were the base oil and I think also the anti-wear oil. So we have to be very cautious about using the results from these in terms of lubricant selection. But as part of the formulation process, we're certainly using these as an indication of good performance, right? So that's four ball weld, four ball wear, and then of course you had the Timken OK load. All right, this test here is known as the SRV tester. SRV is an oscillating test, right? Where you have basically a disc as well as a ball. Often it's used to evaluate um, greases. So you can see here, for example, it's a tiny, tiny amount of grease that is being used on this coupon. And this would be the ball that is then kind of being oscillated against the disc. And you can evaluate it for the amount of wear. The SRV test is kind of handy because we can change the parameters to try and simulate the actual lubricated condition as, as close as possible. Now, one thing that I didn't mention when I was looking at some of the other tests is that you need to evaluate the actual wear scars. And of course, you would generally do that through the use of this kind of microscope where you can place the ball under the microscope and get a very, very um, kind of close up view of the actual kind of wear scars themselves. So this is the SRV unit. All right, so now we're in another room of King Industries Lab. And this time around, we've got another two different testers. This one, probably the more famous of the two, I'd argue. This is the FZG rig. So anytime you've seen gear oils, go and look at the, the technical data sheet and you'll most likely see an FZG rating. Now FZG is usually, I say usually, used to test like this, the anti-scuffing performance of the oil. So here what you can see is we've got a simulated gear system, right? Where you've got the two gears that are running against each other and then we increase the load. So you'll see it usually listed, like the score as listed as a fail stage. So you'll get an FZG fail stage 10, fail stage 11. The test actually goes all the way up to 14 and then it caps out. Right? We don't actually have an official FZG stage 15, right? That doesn't exist. There were attempts to make um, an FZG rig that could go up to a 15, but ultimately you run into some safety risks because once you, you know, put a huge amount of load through the gears, you run the risk of actually snapping the teeth off. And of course that becomes a ballistic and you need to have effectively a bulletproof facility. So, this is, this is the actual gear tooth or well, gear teeth themselves. So this is a, a standardized profile. And if you can actually see them, right? So this is not a, a, a typical set of gear teeth. One thing that you'll notice, if you look at the profile, right, of these, right? And these, the way that they fit together is a very, very specific fit. And it's designed, right? Because you want to stress the gears as much as possible. It's the whole point of these, right? You're, you're actively trying to fail the gears in a short space of time. You know, I would kind of say that this is analogous to a lot of the oxidation tests, right? So in, the, in a lot of the oxidation tests, let's say for example, TOST or RPVOT, we are intentionally introducing catalysts to the oil. We are intentionally adding excess temperature to the oil because we want the oil to fail in a reasonable amount of time so that we can repeat the test, right? You know, turbine oils are designed to last 10,000, 15,000 hours. We don't have that much time to run a test because what a year is about 8,000 hours. So in the same way with gear teeth, right? We want to actively induce scuffing. And so this is the FZG rig. Now the FZG Institute actually kind of defines the terms. Uh, don't ask me to pronounce the way that FZG is supposed to be said because the name is actually about this long. FZG is just an abbreviation it's German. Um, so the FCG Institute actually defines the conditions under which the test is run. Um, so let's say for example, you'll see FCG and sometimes it'll be, it'll say like 8.3-90 or something like that. I think the other one is uh, 16 dash something, some other number. That's basically the conditions of the speed and the temperature which you run the test at. Now when FCG does these tests, they actually kind of ramp up the, the temperature as well as the load and the speed under which the gears are run. And they do that when they're evaluating kind of different gear materials and things like that. 
In the lubricants industry, we've kind of standardized the conditions under which they're run, and we use the fail stage as a way of evaluating the sort of the scuffing performance. So that's the FZG rig. All right, and then over here, we have an FE8 bearing kind of wear testing. Um, probably the best way of demonstrating this. So these units, obviously you can see we've got a motor at the back, which is supposed to spin. Everything sits in a housing on the front here. So it's been removed because uh, King's not um, currently, doesn't ha currently have this in use. But you can see, right? So this would be an example of the bearing that's used. And as it obviously wears, what we get is mass loss, both from the rolling elements, as well as from the cage. And that's the two ways that we score this particular test, is the amount of cage wear, as well as the amount of rolling element wear. So again, right, you know, we, we talked previously about four ball, and we said that is an approximation of a lubricated condition, but that sort of point contact and that point loading, you don't really actually see that in any kind of mechanical system. As we move through to this room, all of a sudden we're seeing proper mechanical systems. So with the FZG, we've got gears, they're very aggressive gears. And here we've got an actual set of, uh, well, this would be uh, effectively a thrust bearing, right? But actual rolling elements. And so we are starting to get closer and closer to a real world mechanical system. Um, and so in that respect, I would say that not all tests are created equal. But anyway, the cool thing about King is that these guys have the capacity to do like all of these kinds of tests. They've also got some hydraulics rigs um, at the, over at the new facility. And so they have the capacity to work with their customers and really kind of hone in on you know, experimental formulations, um, maybe uh, new chemistries and things like that. How do they actually function in the real world? All right.